We're gonna have to go with the I wasn't asking method. So what do all these parts and some of these boxes and this golf cart have in common? If you guessed poor financial decisions, then you'd be right on the money, which I no longer have any of. So, so behind the mess here, this is my 1985 Club Car DS that's originally electric powered, which are going to be swapping a Predator 420 in with a torque converter, reverse gearbox, charging system, and just Harbor Freight goodies that they won't be going in the car, but they'll be helpful for. And we're going to be trying to do this for all under $2,500 with all the parts included and um, excluding the golf cart price. Since I do plan to maybe sell this in the future, I'm going to be doing this uh, as nice as I can, meaning there's a lot of stuff that has to be replaced. We can take a look here and see just how cracked the windshield is. That's got to be replaced. Uh, down here, it's kind of got these janky lights. Those will be replaced with an LED light bar. The tires are all mostly different and probably will end up being replaced as well as the wheels. The seat definitely needs to go because it is like full of mold and it's pretty gross. Yeah, not what we want. And down here is where the batteries would have lived as well as the motor which is non-existent on this and fortunately for me they were kind enough to leave all the garbage and stuff in here which uh will be thrown out and you can see the roof is pretty gross too all right before we jump into the cleaning of it let's go over some of the parts and the plans here so right off the bat we've got a predator 420 that cranks out about 13 horsepower and maybe about 20 foot pounds of torque and that will be paired to this 40 series torque converter and that will go to this uh, reverse box, which is only rated for about six horsepower, so I'm not sure how that is going to act. That being said, this is an all aluminum frame golf cart and it is extremely light, so I'm hoping that because it's light, that this won't blow up too soon. This is a permanent magnet 20 amp dynamo that uh, has these two AC output wires and this is supposed to be a 20 amp uh, voltage regulator to give it uh, whatever the AC out of this is to go into 12 volts. A uh, real simple thing, I'm just not sure if this is going to be robust enough for what I want to do with this cart, but that is something we'll find out. And now this is the pulley that I'm going to be putting on to spin this. This is a, quite a small pulley. I'm not sure the exact size of that. But the plan's more to uh, keep this spinning quite fast. Uh, because at the low RPMs, I really want this to be charging and not draining the battery. So my theory is the smaller pulley will be uh, plenty to spin this fast enough to the point where I'll be generating voltage at, and keeping the battery charged when it's idling. However, that is a 13 horsepower motor at its peak RPMs. So I'm not really sure if this is going to cause too much drag on the motor, but that's something we can play around with. Uh, another thing I have here is a 10 spline GE motor coupler to a one inch uh, bore here, which I'll be using with a shaft with some pillow block bearings and um, a sprocket on that shaft. So it'll likely be a keyed shaft so I can change the sprocket out. And then this gearbox is just a standard gearbox, which I'll have some nice oil to go in there because I'd prefer not to blow it up right away. And the gear reduction on this, I think, is like 1.3 to 1. Um, I'm not sure 100%. So if you guys have any suggestions on what size sprocket should go in the back attached to the motor, that would help a lot because I'm not really sure what to do there. And what I'm thinking about mounting the engine to is going to be the gearbox back there itself because that gearbox um, will move and articulate with the suspension. It's on leaf springs. So if I mount the motor over here in this area and I hit some bumps, it, there's a high chance that it's gonna throw the chain. So that will be annoying. So we're gonna have to figure out something to do there. And I was debating whether I'm doing it with aluminum or steel, but I'm thinking now with all the vibrations and the potholes and everything, steel's probably the best way to go. Another thing I'll also need to do is take these reflectors out and put some brake lights in it and some turn signals because I do want this thing to be road legal as it can be here in Florida. If there's any money left over in the budget, I might make an Arduino attack, which would be pretty cool. Maybe like a 3D printed dash area there, something neat. I'm not sure what to do with that area over there, but if you guys have any suggestions, drop a comment below. And this uh, this forward neutral reverse for the electric motor, which was just a polarity selector, will be replaced with the actual gear selector and as well as the charging port. I'm not sure what to do with that yet, and I don't know what this is or was. If you guys have an idea what that was, again, drop a comment. Now, in terms of this seat with this horribly rotten plywood, um, I'm going to just put a new piece of plywood on there. I'll probably keep this rail as it is, clean it up a little bit, probably paint it 
And I'm going to make an attempt at making a seat for this with some foam and some vinyl, and then the same with these seat backs here, or these seats here, and then seeing if I can replace these seat backs, which I was able to find online, and then just put a nice seat cover over everything because I have no artistic abilities, and that translates to my sewing skills as well. Another problem we're gonna have to tackle is this gas pedal. This went to, I believe, like a variable resistor or something, somewhere down there, but there is an arm that moves back and forth, so I'll have to figure out some kind of throttle linkage with that. And another thing that we have to take care of is the brakes, because right now there are no brakes on this car. We can, we've tried putting it in park, but nothing happens, and stepping on them while being pushed, it, nothing happens as well. So either the brake lines themselves will need to be replaced, which I was able to find online as well, or the, uh, the shoes and the drums will have to be replaced, which on these carts there's only two there's just in the rear that's all they've got so that'll be pretty easy to do i also plan on replacing the worn out shocks uh, or little struts in there in the front and the back because the cart moves a lot and if there's any money left over in the budget i'll do the leaf springs as well and maybe possibly toss a lift on there here's a shot of the differential down there and i believe it's an open diff and that's that coupler over there that will go on to that 10 spline shaft up there and we're gonna make some stuff happen. Before I really start digging into this thing, I've gotta clean it up because I don't wanna get Hauntavirus or whatever other things are in there. Let's see, some wires that are well past their expiration date. And then there's this thing, which I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it looks like it was a, possibly an outlet or something. I'm not sure. Don't eat it. And some assorted nuts and bolts, but they're all kinda of gross and I have more. Well, after that little bath, it certainly smells a lot better. So now we have to access this whole area. So we're gonna take the seat off for that. Our first order of business here is to take all these um, solenoids and resistor things off as well as all the cabling here because we won't need this anymore and it's just in the way. Another thing I'm wondering is if I have to cut this out to make space for where the motor is going to sit. Well, believe it or not, these old nuts don't want to come off, so we're going to have to go with the I wasn't asking method. All right, so now that the nuts and studs are no longer existent, let's see if this wants in. It doesn't. Oh, there's somebody watching this right now laughing like, ah, oh, you idiot. That's welded. That'll never come off. But if you tug hard enough, anything will get off. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of nut left, so I brought in the negotiator. And just like magic, that plate is ready to come off. I've got no idea if these fasteners are in metric or standard. So I'm just kind of using a combination of both. Right now I'm using the 9 sixteenths. That seems to be doing the trick. All right, well that took way longer than I'd like to admit, only because this all wires up into this thing, which is pretty neat. Uh, this is like the old throttle control system, and if you can see in here, there's like switches for each, uh, I guess, corresponding solenoid and resistor, whatever you want to call them. So the further you press the pedal back in, the uh, different switches it hit, which, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Very cool, like old school electronic control box. And the reason I didn't just rip all this out is because... Just because I don't need it doesn't mean that someone else won't. So I'll probably just put this for like free up on uh, Facebook Marketplace or something. Now it's time to pull out the rest of this stuff. All right, now it's time to unbox the Predator after we've made some space. Looks like it came with a gasket for maybe the starter housing and I think some jets too for the carb. That'll be nice. And there we have it. So the plan is to get the motor in in this orientation with the pull start being over here, which I'll probably remove just so I could have better engine cooling. And obviously 
the exhaust will come off, the gas tank will come off, and I might do an air filter setup differently for the carburetor here. Let's see if I can get this thing in. I don't think it's gonna wanna, there we go. Well, it's in, but it's not in the right way. Some things definitely have to be moved first. I'll probably have to take off the exhaust and the intake housing. Let's see what that looks like. Hey look, it's a thumbnail shot. So here we go. Here's a problem that I can see already is, so we've got the shaft over here and then the input shaft for the motor is all the way over there. So we are quite a ways off. So we need to come this way quite a bit, but that presents a problem with potentially interfering with this uh, beam here, which I believe to be pretty structural and I don't know if I want to notch that. So I've got some thinking to do, some measuring to do, which will all be done in part two. And make sure you subscribe because you're not going to want to miss me trying to get this 420cc motor into this electric golf cart, which is already kind of small, already kind of cramped, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun, especially having reverse as well. So this is going to be a big challenge. There'll probably be, I'm guessing, maybe like four or five parts to this. Probably about the fourth, I'm hoping, part is where I actually get to go and drive it. So like the video if you liked it, share it with a friend, leave a comment below if you want to see something done differently or if you want to see something uh, extra added to this cart. And remember, as always, keep it foul.